Uh, so let me let me take this one. Um, hearing you talk about statistics of left-leaning professors in fear for their careers, where exactly is the seemingly overwhelming power coming from that has the world quivering, careers ending, mass media dramatically conforming, and seemingly everyone kowtowing? I recently read an article by comedian David Spade lamenting the complete watering down of his profession of comedy. Where's the seemingly overwhelming power coming from? Is it simply a massive sanction of the victim? Now that is, if I can say so, an excellent question. I mean, a really, really, really good question. Why are they successful? Critical race theory is the tiniest minorities in the world believe in it. Very few people even know what it is. People who, um, who uh, uh, censor all this stuff in academia, it's, it's the minority. Most professors in academia don't believe in this anti-free speech, anti-thinking, anti-reason mentality. Now, they might be anti-reason in other realms, but they're not nihilists like these people are. They're not e egalitarians like these people are. Most people don't care about offensive comedy. A few do. So where does the power come from? Where does the power to silence come from? Where does the power to bring about this kind of fear come from? What are they afraid of? Well, they're afraid of the people in power, but why are the people in power who don't necessarily believe this stuff, why are they succumbing to it? Why are they inflicting it? Inflicting it? And this is the power of morality. You see, the nutcases on the left, and I know nutcases is not right because they're not technically nutcases and maybe diminishes who they are. The, 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 extreme, the uh, far left, the irrational left, the nihilistic left, is a tiny minority. But they are confident morally, they have a certain point of view. The point of view is, for the most part, disgusting and wrong. But they assert it with confidence. They won't take any questioning of it. They are right. They are just. Most of the other people think they're wrong, think the CRT types are wrong, they think they're bad, but they don't know what's good. They don't have an ideal. They don't have a philosophy. They don't have a morality. So the woke are confident. They assert their morality without question. Uh, just to use uh, 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 you know, social media, for example, they will retweet their most ridiculous tweets because they are convinced that they are right. And they don't care if everybody knows it and they don't care if everybody hates them for it. The problem is that the opposition they face is timid, is quiet, is embarrassed. Now, there are two types of opposition. One is the timid, the quiet, the embarrassed, the, the intellectual, the thoughtful, Thoughtful in a negative sense, in the sense of Hamlet. Should I do it or shouldn't I do it? Well, maybe I, maybe, no, I, no, no, well, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'll wait. I'll think about it tomorrow. The timidity of overthinking, if you will. So the opposition is timid. Or the opposition is as nutty as they are, just from a different perspective. That's why I'm not in favor of forming coalitions with not cases, even if what you're fighting are not cases. It's the timid, quiet, and lack confidence. They will not assert themselves because they don't stand for anything. I mean, center left, center right, what do they stand for? What do they believe in? What are they confident in? What are the values they're willing to, to fight over? 
It's just not worth it for them. They'd rather be afraid than fight. They'd rather cower than take a stand. And that's what has to change. To defeat wokeism, all it takes is the people who oppose wokeism to stand up and say, bullshit, we're not taking this anymore. Go to hell. What you're saying is nonsense. Bye. We're not even going to argue with you. We're not going to even make this a debate. We just don't buy into it. We're not going to be afraid anymore. We're going to publish the articles we want. We're going to say what we want to say. We're going to use whatever words we want to use. You want to fire all of us? Fire all of us. Every single member of this department, or every single member of the university. Fire them all. You see, the good has real power if, if it's willing to stand up for themselves. Because these woke, is, woke people, they can't run a company. Not really. They can't survive the good guys walking out on them or just standing up to them. They would fold immediately. There's nothing there. There's no, there's no there there. Yeah, the Wizard of Oz is a good analogy. They thrive on the meekness of the opposition. They thrive on the unprincipled nature of the opposition. They thrive on the fact that nobody will stand up to them. I just imagine all the professors who are not woke at a university saying, we quit. The university will collapse. And then all those woke professors will be homeless under a bridge somewhere because they can't work. So evil is impotent. The good has power if the good uses it, if the good stands for something, if the good knows it's good and knows why it's good. If you understand evil as anti-values, you shouldn't tolerate one iota of it. So leave, resign, move on. You're going to do better than appeasing these people. You can always do better than appeasing these people. So I thought that was an excellent question because it is. It's shocking how a tiniest of minorities right now the tiniest of minorities is basically take over, taking over the thinking in this country. Not because anybody thinks they're right, but because the people who oppose them remain quiet. And this is why I say speak up. Make your voice heard in whatever capacity you can. Thanks, best friend Hank. What we need today what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages, and to the role of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. 
And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.